morning, Focus Dear. It's wonderful to be with you again, even if it's online. And actually, we are looking forward to seeing you all very soon. So nice when I go into a shop or walk the dogs and I see somebody along the street or I come across somebody in, in, in town and it, it just feels so exciting to see everybody again or um, see you there and just have a quick chat. And I really enjoy seeing you. And you know what? We're going to see each other soon. I really um, trust that the lockdown will be over soon so we can, we can at least meet and then have fellowship again together at the congregation um, at the church. But in the meantime, uh, it's nice to be with you in your homes. Uh, at the end of the day, you are church at home. That is where church is. Church and the Holy Spirit uh, is in your life, in your heart, in your, in your body. The Holy Spirit goes wherever you go and you are church. So you need to take church to your homes, be church in your homes, take it to your work, be church in your work, because that's actually how God intended it. And this time has actually brought us back to basics and made us think again, you know, how to be church at home. Now today I want to bring you a message which is close to my heart. And um, when, when my kids were small, I used to have a Bible that I, that I got for them. And it was called the Honey Word Bible because it had certain words in it that made certain verses and certain ideas stick. And then it would bring out a specific word and it would help the child remember the verse by this word. And I actually want to work on that today, on that same principle. And I want one word to stick in your mind today. And I want to use um, a picture. I want to use the picture of a mirror. And I want it to stick in your mind today. I want to, when you look, when you look in the mirror um, at your home and or maybe in your purse or at work, when you look in the mirror again, I want you to remember this word. Let this picture of a mirror uh, and let the, this verse and everything remind you that this is what God says. Let us start by praying first. Lord, I pray for everybody listening that we, each time they look in a mirror, your Holy Spirit will remind them of this word. That, that a mirror will from now on be a reminder to them uh, of what you have to say this morning. And I thank you for that in Jesus' name. Now I want to read you a passage, um, James 1, from 22 to 25. It says there, but don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourself. For if, if you listen to the word and don't obey it, it is like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, walk away, and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law, it sets you free. And if you do what it says, and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. Now, um, when we look at a mirror, when you take a mirror and you look in a mirror, uh, that basically determines how you feel. If you like what you see, uh, then it makes you feel good. Uh, if you look in the mirror and you're proud of that person that you see in the mirror, it gives you confidence. And when you, you have confidence, you act out of that confidence. And then you go and do stuff and, you, and then it, it, it snowballs. And you, and you look in the mirror again and you feel proud and it gives you confidence and then that's how you go on. But if you look in the mirror and you don't like what you see, then you act out of inse your insecurities. You feel bad. And then you act, um, or you don't act, you don't do anything um, because you, you don't like what you see. For example, if you look in the mirror and you think, oh, look at the failure I am, uh, or I'm not good enough, then that's how you act. And then you don't do stuff uh, that you believe in. You don't believe in yourself. And then you believe that you are a failure. And now James compares the word of God to a mirror. He says, um, if you do the word of God, um, then it's like looking in a mirror and remembering what you see. But if you look in the, if you if you read the word and you don't do it, you, you're not um, obedient. Then it's like looking in a mirror and then forgetting what you see, what how you looked, and, and forgetting what you see. And then what is the use? I mean, what is the use looking in a mirror if you don't remember what you see, uh, or if you don't take note what you see? 
Like, what is the use of reading God's word if you don't uh, do it and if you're not obedient? And he compares the, the, the word of God to a mirror just as a comparison for his point of to be obedient. But actually, it's a brilliant comparison because we all have um, lots of mirrors in our life. Now, I don't know about you, but when I look in the mirror, I don't actually forget what I see. I, I, I genuinely don't forget what I see, but I choose certain parts to remember. You know, you can look in a mirror and see oh look at the wrinkles or look at the scars and that's what you remember when you walk away you don't see the whole picture you don't see the beauty you don't see um so but when we look in the mirror we can sometimes see what we want to see and it's not and, and sometimes it can be the bad things and that's what we remember and then um, if somebody tells me okay we describe how you look when i've when i've looked away then i will say okay brown hair okay and i have some wrinkles or some scars and I describe and I remember the bad things so I don't know if you just totally forget how you look in a mirror but I do know that we all remember certain things and that de determines how we act and how we feel now there's actually quite a few mirrors in our lives if we think of it um, James talk about talks about um, the word of God which is a mirror in your life or which should be a mirror in your life uh, because we should reflect and see what's in God's word. You know, there's other things that are mirrors in our lives too. For example, um, what others think. Uh, my phone, where social media is on, and other people's opinions and things. That's a mirror to me as well. I look at it, and I scroll up, and I look at the, uh, the, the opinions of other people, and then I reflect that back at me. You know, I think, oh, now I feel bad, because look at that. That's how I should be. Um, this is it's also a mirror sometimes. Uh, we get newspapers or news, that's a mirror, because we look at it and then we think, oh, there's no hope or fear or perhaps comparison, and then that's a mirror. And oftentimes the past can be a mirror in our lives too, because we look at the past or we act out of an insecurity that we only see from the past. Perhaps uh, when you were younger, somebody said you couldn't do something and that's become your mirror. Every time you look, uh, you see that, pop, that time when somebody said that you couldn't do something. And so you act out of that. But James says, the best mirror that you can have is the Bible. And um, God wants the Bible to be your mirror. He wants to be your mirror. And I want to read you another verse. And this is why God wants the Bible to be your mirror. And that's from 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18. And he says there, but we all with unveiled face. So there's nothing in front of my face. I'm not hiding it. I've got no mask on. Beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. We all are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Isn't that wonderful? He says, you know, when you, it's like looking in a mirror and you're seeing yourself being transformed. Uh, from glory to glory because when God looks at you he sees Jesus and he wants you when you look in your mirror to see Jesus that's why he's given us the word of God as a mirror um, and when you look at yourself in this word you see Jesus and um, Jesus did that it's not because we're special it's not because um, we deserve it it's not because, I don't know, he loves you more than others. There's, there's, no, there's no reason why we deserve uh, to look like Jesus than other than what Jesus did for us. You know, if, we, if we accept Jesus and what he did for, you, for us, if you accept his sacrifice and accept him, his gift of salvation into your life, then when God looks at you, you look like Jesus to him. Isn't that wonderful? I mean, that's just mercy. We don't deserve that at all, uh, to look like Jesus when, when God looks at us. God sees you like a proud father sees his child for the first time. When a, when a new dad looks at, look at, looks at his baby child, he's proud. I mean, that child looks perfect to him. It looks, he looks perfect and wonderfully made. There's nothing wrong, and he's got such love for it. 
And the only reason why that God looks at us that way is because Jesus restored us. Uh, if we see um, uh, in Genesis 1 verse 31, it says there that uh, then God looked over all he had made and he saw that it was very good. God looked at you and me like a new father looks at his child and says, isn't he perfect? Isn't he wonderful? And then I know sin came and we were, we were made sin and we, we became sin and, and that was all destroyed. But then Jesus came and he, um, he put us back into that position where God looks at us and, said, and says, he, see, he sees that it is very good. Because he sees Jesus. Uh, he looks at us and we are mirroring Jesus to him. Uh, because uh, we have his son as our savior. Now I want to encourage you that if God sees you as Jesus. Uh, and, and, and sees Jesus in you. Then um, we need to do it as well. We need to do it as well. Uh, when you take a mirror. Whatever you use in your daily life to see how you look to yourself. See, um, what is it that's influencing you? We need to take the Bible. And, and I want to encourage you to have the Bible as your mirror. Um, just for example, if you take things like um, in Jesus, Jesus says if you, if you know the Bible, then he says you are able. He says you can. You can. Now, if you take the past as your mirror, what do you think? Do you think you can do it? Um, if you take... The media or other people's opinion of you. Do you think you can do it? That's not a very reliable mirror. Um, but if you take the Bible as your mirror, then he says in Philippians, For I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Again, through Christ. Remember, if you have Jesus in you, if you have Jesus as your Savior, then that is how God sees you. And if you see yourself at, as well as Jesus, you're the one who helps me do that. Then you can do that. Um, also, you know, if you think, how are you made? How do you look? Are you wonderfully made? Are you good enough? Then, then you can look at, at the other mirrors and see what they think of you. But if you look at the Word of God, he says, he says in Psalm 139 verse 14, I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. And I know that full well. How does David know that? He knows that because... Um, because he knew God's word. He was looking in this mirror. He was looking in the mirror of what God says of you. If you think of your future. And you look at the news. And you look at that mirror. Then sometimes you know, that can distort and take hope away. And you think there's no hope for my future. Or, or what other people say. And their opinions. And there's no hope for a future. But if you take this as your mirror. Then you see it says. Jeremiah 29 11, He says for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord. They plans to prosper you and not to harm you. They're plans to give you hope for the future. Now, you have to decide this morning, which mirror are you going to use? What is the mirror you're going to look in every day when you think of who you are, how you look, um, what are you able to do? What is the plans for you? Do you have hope? Do you like what you see? When you look in the mirror again, then remember that God wants you to have His Word as your mirror. And think, what does His Word say? How do you look? How should you look at yourself? How should you remember yourself? You should look at yourself through God's mirror. And the secret to, to, to look into this mirror is to know your mirror. To look into it often. To open it up and to say, I want to know what God says about me. Um, do you know that he knows you? He's the one who made you. When you have something that you buy and you want to know everything about it, you take out the instruction manual and it tells you everything. You can know something by its instructions. And this is your instruction manual of who you are and what God thinks, thinks of you and how he made you and what you're able to do and, and his plans for you and how he wants you to think about yourself. So you need to know this word of God. You need to know the mirror. You need to be able to, to, to um, 
quote this and say, this is what God says I am. And in the mornings, and that is what James was saying, you know, if you look, if you look into the mirror and you read something and in the day and you go and you don't and you just forget about it, what's the use? But if you remember it, it's going to be of great use to you. It's going to change your life. It's going to help you be obedient. You're going to do what it says. And then remember the promise was, then God will bless you for doing it. If you do it and you make this your way, you will be blessed. He will bless you for doing it. Because you will start conforming your life and seeing yourself as Jesus. You'll start seeing yourself as Jesus, as Jesus is. You'll become from glory to glory like Jesus. Because that's God's plan. That's God's plan. He wants us to become more and more like Jesus. And, and, it's, and we're able to do that if we just make sure we look in this mirror. I want to close with how God sees us as well. And it's so special. How God sees us in Ephesians 1, verse 3 to 5, he says. He says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us. In him, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, he says, and in, in another version, he says, and it gave him great pleasure says in i'm going to read you the the, the new living tra translation it says and praise to god the father of our lord jesus christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with christ remember if you have jesus as your savior then when god looks at you he sees jesus he sees what jesus did he sees um, jesus's love for you he sees jesus's sacrifice he sees how uh, he trans he's transforming you to be like his son. Then it says, even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault. Then when God looks at you and he says, Jesus, he doesn't see your faults. He doesn't see your, your, your issues or your habits. He sees Jesus. And the Holy Spirit in you is transforming you from glory to glory because it says, um, he decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do and it gave him great pleasure. Gave him great pleasure. It gives me great pleasure when I can do stuff for my children, when I can help them, when I can bless them with things, when I can um, help them with issues or it gives me great pleasure when I can do it. How much more does it give, not give God great pleasure when he can uh, help you see who you really are? When he helps you look in the mirror and he says, uh, you must put all the other mirrors aside now. And you must use God's word as your mirror. And you must realize that you give him great pleasure because that is what he wants. And when he sees you, you give him pleasure. When he sees you because he sees Jesus, he has pleasure because and that's a gift because you don't need to do anything to get Jesus. You just need to accept him. Um, that's, if you haven't accepted Jesus in your heart this morning, I want you to pray with me. Just close your eyes with me and pray with me. Lord Jesus, um, if there's anybody who hasn't accepted Christ, I pray, Lord, that this morning will be their turn, that they will will take you as, his, as their Savior. Let's pray the prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you that you died for me on the cross. Thank you that you uh, gave your life for me and that you, you, you give your spirit in my heart. I want to accept your, your sacrifice of salvation, your sacrifice. I accept your sacrifice on the cross this morning. And I want you to come into my heart through your spirit. And I want you to change my life. Lord, I, I, I confess my sin. I confess 
any wrongdoing and I ask you to forgive me. And I thank you that you have forgiven me when you died on the cross. But today I accept it and I want to live for you. I want you to be in my life. I want to become like you. I want to, to become like you more and more. And I want, to, I want to spread the word. I want to do what you want me to do. So thank you, Lord, that you are faithful. Thank you that you are faithful. This morning I, I pray for each one, Lord, that they, will, that they will look into this mirror of your word every day. Every day read something, hear something, sing praises of something that, that will bring them closer to you, that they will see who they really are, that they will become more like Jesus and see it in their lives as well. Thank you, Lord, that you do this in Jesus' name. Now I want to encourage you, remember, every time you see a mirror, then remember, let that remind you, I need to go and look in this mirror what God has done for, for me and, what, and how he wants me to see myself. I want to go and look in this mirror to see what God thinks of me and I want to think of it myself, how I am. And I want to encourage you, you know, when God sees you, he has great pleasure. So when you look in a mirror and you think, oh, I don't like what I see, let that be your warning. To say, no, no, I need to go and look and see what pleasure has God um, when he sees me. I want to also have that. I have a wonderful um, week further and a blessed week further in the knowledge that you give God pleasure and the knowledge that he wants to see Christ in you and in the knowledge that he wants you to be proud of yourself and to be proud of what you see when you look in this mirror, when you become more and more like Christ. Bless you.